So I like this girl, and I want to get to know her. But I don't want to stalk her. I want to get to know everything about her without sifting through page by page. This is how you do it. This is our speaker, Sasha Pallenberg. He is the editor-in-chief of Netbook News. And uh, he's here today to enlighten us and answer some of our questions. So without further ado, Sasha, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, Falker was asking me um, how long my speech would last, and I told him three and a half hours, and he got a little bit scared. Um, you know, it's an open project. It might develop over the evening. And we have a Q&A, of course. So if anybody is asking me why my skin color changed from white to pretty much red, it's not any kind of fashion statement. I've been at the beach of Kending this weekend and acted pretty much like a stupid tourist. It means forgot the sunblock and i um, suffering a little bit. Um, I would like to talk about, uh, I would like to give you a little overview of, of what's happening on the mobile computing market in these days. Uh, we all are in this tablet bus bubble, uh, tablets here, tablet there, everywhere. Uh, at Computex on the show floor, we saw tablets, I don't know, like 30, 40 different tablets. Um, and I would, like to, to, uh, I would like to give you a little overview of this and what's happening, and then introducing you um, a different category, a term that was made up by a friend of mine of uh, VentureBeat almost like two years ago, which is called the Superphone. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the tablet market. These are pretty much all the tablets that are available right now uh, that got at least uh, announced. Oh, my, my laser pointer is even working. Fantastic. I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't have two laser pointers. There's another screen. <laughs> um, so over here we have, you know, Samsung Galaxy Tab, Asus, EPET slider, that's a, that's a nice form factor coming out over here in Taiwan, um, right now in June actually. Um, that's a Blackberry Playbook, actually my favorite uh, tablet so far, because I really, I'm really a great fan of, of QNX and uh, their very customized Linux system. And then it goes on with the LG Optimus Pad, um, that's dead on arrival, I hope there are no LG uh, employees over here right now. I'm always honest, I'm sorry about that. Um, that's the Ace Iconia Tab A1, uh, A500, sorry about that. That's the A100, it's a seven inch device. And that's, that's the big bestseller over here in Taiwan uh, right now. It's, it, it's sold out everywhere. We, have, we had a huge problem to get an EPET transformer like five or six weeks ago. Well, actually we got one, but we couldn't get this goddamn, oh, shoot. Um, this, the, this keyboard docking station, it w well, we saw a couple of them, but they were all pre-ordered. And even if you told them, okay, you know, I might gonna give you a thousand T's more, if you're gonna give up this docking station, no chance. So um, all these devices are in the market right now, besides um, the HP touchpad that you can see uh, on the bottom left corner, it will be available in the US on the 1st of July. Is it still working? There we go. And, uh, and the Ace Iconia tab, uh, A100, the seven inch honeycomb tablet um, that got shifted to the third quarter, I would guess like September, October, because they seem to have some problems with seven inch and honeycomb. Um, to give you a little overview of the tablet market, how it will look like in 2011, um, the prediction for the sales are between 40 and 50 million units. Sounds a lot. The problem is um, the industry thought, uh, okay, you know what? We're gonna build some more. They're gonna build about 80 to 90 million units this year. That means by the end of the year, um, if you wanna buy a tablet right now, you shouldn't do it. You should buy it for Christmas. <laughs> because there will be so many tablets available and they need to get rid of their stocks, they will be dead cheap. <laughs> They're just building way too many tablets right now because it's a huge bubble. And of course, um, the biggest prediction for 2011 is Android is taking over. I've been um, holding the opening keynote for the DroidCon in April in Berlin. And I had a press conference afterwards and they wanted me to come up with any kind of prediction. And I told them, you know, by, the, by the end of the year 2012, the Android tablet market or the Android uh, tablet OS, Honeycomb, will Will, will sell out or will sell more than the Apple iPad 
and the iOS, and it was all over the news. That was actually the first time I got on Xena.com and, uh, and on, on the Indian Times or something like that. Interestingly, um, not so many Western medias were covering it, but most of the Western analysts were sending me emails and asking me uh, how I could make this up, that it's complete bullshit. You know what? Interestingly, um, just about five days ago, there was a white paper from, from Display Search uh, released, and it was their mobile PC shipment and forecast report. And uh, that was actually the headline that white box make the second highest in global tablet PC market behind Apple. The problem is with analysts in these days, the problem is with Western companies, they are focused on Western markets. No one, no one knows what's happening in China. Well, they know that they're building some stuff over there and then they're <laughs> shifting it over and we're getting our logo on it, but that's about it. And uh, as you can see, the white box tablet PC shipment grows. It's over 230% from quarter to quarter this year. So that's, that's amazing. And the market share of Apple already dropped down to 54% this year. So my prediction that Android will take over the market from iOS by the end of 2012, um, I think it's going to happen already in 2011. This is a completely different market, and I would like to show you a little bit how it looks like. Well, first of all, just one more little table over here where you can see that actually the sales for tablet PCs uh, dropped from the first to the second quarter this year by 5.2% but still the yearly grows 1,350% uh, almost. And when we're talking about netbooks, it's interesting to see that they kind of generated some growth from quarter to quarter, which is mainly based on growth in emerging countries. So the Western market is almost saturated with netbooks. Everybody has a netbook, and now people are getting into uh, tablet markets. And of course, you know the problem with the notebook PCs that we're all familiar with. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are familiar with this site, Alibaba.com, um, an online shop or distributor, sales channel, you name it. I don't know how to define Alibaba.com. Um, when you when you go into their website and when you when you're searching for tablet PCs, and when you see the results that are coming up over there, and uh, let's just take a look in here. So you're going to find about 261,000 different versions of tablet PCs. I mean, these are mainly companies with like 20, 30 employees, and they can ship like 20 or 40 units uh, a week, and they're all handmade, and most of them really look handmade. <laughs> but they're selling them, right? It's just um, when, when, when you're going to Shenzhen right now, and if you would like to build a tablet PC from scratch, now you can sit down over there, they have a huge catalog telling you, okay, what kind of CPU do you need, what kind of GPU, how big should the screen be, and how many units do you need? And you say, okay, I meet, might need 5,000 units, and they should cost $99. Right? And then they're going to tell you, oh, you know what, and I even have a cousin, has a container business, what's your home port, I'm going <laughs> to ship it in 30 days. You can't do this over here in Taiwan. By building a, building a tablet PC from scratch with a huge Taiwanese ODM takes you almost three months right now. Of course, the quality of, the, uh, uh, of this product might be a little bit different, right? Um, let's take a look a little bit at uh, future platform, what's going to happen on this market right now. Um, this is a slide that NVIDIA was using during the CES uh, keynote in January. And it just shows you the annual shipments of ARM platforms and x86. And you can see, you know, this huge growth rate of uh, ARM while x86 is almost flattened out. <coughs> and I think that's a pretty interesting one to see how many years it took iOS and Android to ship 100 million units. That was like three years. And it's, if you compare this to, to x86, right, it just took them almost like 15 years for the, since they released the first x86 CPU. So right now, it seems to be all about ARM. And uh, 
all these CPUs that we're using in the recent uh, tablet PCs, um, the Apple A5, which actually, in my opinion, um, really changed the market a lot. When you disassemble an Apple iPad and you're taking a look at an Apple A5 CPU, it's not anything like a small little Qualcomm Snapdragon that is only as big as a thumbnail. Um, it is way bigger. It's a very, very expensive, actually, highly integrated chipset. And due to this, Apple actually opened the market also for companies like Qualcomm or NVIDIA to really come up with, with more advanced chipset and not building these $5 CPUs anymore that we've been using our Nokia phones and playing Snake or something like this, if anyone is familiar with that game. Um, that's the TI OMAP for uh, Snapdragon by Qualcomm, and uh, that's the Samsung Equinox. Um, they're all based on the ARM Cortex A9 platform, which is right now, um, yeah, the platform you need to get into your tablet if you want to have any kind of success. And of course, it's right now the cheapest one because of, uh, well, in terms of price compared to performance that you're getting out of it. But definitely, don't you dare to call out Wintel. Microsoft <laughs> and Intel, these two companies are just, are just huge, right? And they have a problem right now. And believe me, it scares them. And it makes them angry. And we have, we have two different developments right now in terms of CPUs. When we're looking at ARM, it's a bottom to top race. They're coming from low power consumption, highly integrated chipsets, but they were all selecting performance. While Intel is coming from this performance part, and they had to learn how to build up an SOC and how to build up highly integrated chipset and how to lower the power consumption of it. So right now you have Intel coming down and ARM going up. And uh, I can definitely tell you that we're gonna see some, some mobile platforms from Intel next year. There will, be, there will be Intel x86 smartphones next year. And there will be an operating system for this. What Microsoft introduced just to is it two weeks ago, Computex? Oh my god, I don't know how much time zone I am. Um, their, Windows, their Windows 8 presentation, I've been complaining about Microsoft now for over a decade. And actually, that was the very first time they made me wow. Because what they've been showing with their Windows 8 was just very, very cool. And it's going to change the whole world also for ARM. Because for the very first time, Windows is supporting the ARM platform. And for developers, it makes it very easy because the code that you're going to write on these platforms for Windows 8, the application that you're going to develop for Windows 8, they will be compatible for x86 and ARM. You don't need to recompile it anymore. So this opens a huge new ecosystem for developers. And definitely in, in 2012, we're gonna see some really cool devices based on Windows 8 and also based on an x86 platform. When it comes to performance, when we compare an ARM CPU that we're using in our phones in these days, if you compare this to an x86 platform, they are not anywhere near the performance of x86. ARM is still in their 32-bit world, while Intel and AMD and even VIA over here, they're using 64-bit CPUs for ages. Right, and as soon as ARM wants to step up to 64-bit, which would take a couple of years, they want to get more performance in there, building up bigger caches. It will also result into more power consumption again. You know, they have to learn this. And of course, Intel also has to learn the other way. So it's going to be very, very interesting in the next year. So let's talk a little bit about performance of the ARM platform. Um, this is what you can expect next year. So the ARM Cortex A9, which is uh, the CPU that you're all familiar with, uh, is, uh, is going up to two gigahertz. We're gonna get quad-core ARM Cortex A15. We will have quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3, and uh, we had the chance to play around with it during Computex, and I can definitely tell you, it's like having a little mobile supercomputer in your pocket. 
right now. It's just amazing. Um, if, if this development is going on like this in just two years, it's mainly, mainly a problem uh, of the GPU, but in, in about two years, we will have the performance of a PlayStation 3 in, in our pockets, or of, a, of an Xbox 360. And when you're looking at the power consumption of these devices, you compare them uh, to, to these platforms, it's just amazing what, what the mobile industry is doing. <laughs> and of course, we're gonna get a, a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon. So this is all going to happen next year. You will be able to buy quad-core smartphones next year which is already mind-blowing in my opinion. GPU, uh, GPU cores between two and 16. So the new NVIDIA Tegra 3 is running 16 GPU cores already. Um, you can definitely run some decent games on it, which is going to be a huge problem for the console industry. Think about you know, kids in between 12, 15, their first computer right now is a smartphone. Right? And they can hook it up to a, over an HDMI cable to a huge TFT display. And then there's the first, maybe Taiwanese company coming out with a Bluetooth gamepad controller. And then they're going to run console games on it. And they can carry it with them all the time and head over to their friends, right? You have a TFT, I have the console. There you go. <laughs> right? And there's no need to buy CDs anymore. They're downloading all their games over an app store for 99 cents or $5. They're not going to be able to sell any more $50 games. It's over. What about display sizes? So um, I brought up a little definition of, of tablets. And uh, I call a 10-inch tablet uh, a micro-mobility tablet, because I still think that this isn't very mobile. This is more something that you would like to use on your couch. Right, and you're, you're, you're taking your tablet from one room to the other, just from your living room over to your bedroom or whatever kitchen. While um, a seven inch tablet is definitely very mobile for me. You can, you can still put it in your pocket. You can even hold it with one hand, which is a huge difference. For a 10 inch tablet, you always need, need to hold it in two hands or you have a little cover, right, where you can just place it on a table right in front of you but it's kind of hard to hold it with one hand. That's what you can do with a seven inch tablet. Yeah, and then there is this weird category of 8.9 inch in between tablets, and that's why this LG tablet is dead on arrival. Uh, and yeah, one more thing. That's a, uh, that was a quote from June 2010. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this one. No one's going to buy a phone so big, you can't get your hands around it. This guy is actually pretty famous who made this one this fellow over here. <laughs> and um, he said, what, what Steve Jobs is, I mean, I really like him. He's, he's a marketing genius. So whenever he sees something that might hurt their sales, you know, he's, he's going to bash it immediately and complain about it. He also said that seven inch uh, tablets are dead on arrival. And now everybody is coming out with seven inch tablets in these days. So um, this category is, in my opinion, or is defined as super phones. And over here we have a definition. It's between four and five inch displays. At least dual core, quad core in 2012, and HD movie and gaming capability. And they will roughly cost between or around 500 euros and $500. So obviously, Steve was a little bit wrong because the group of no ones turned out to be quite a big group. Um, that's a quote from Gartner uh, from February this year, after they've been looking at the sales of the US smartphone market. Um, that's an NPD group quote, driven largely by sales of high-end Android phones, mobile handsets with screens that are four inches or larger now comprise nearly one quarter of all smartphone sales. That happened in Q4 2010. So almost 25% of all smartphones sold in the US in Q4 last year were smartphones uh, uh, with screen sizes above four inch. Okay, 24%, there you go. So yeah, who should care about this? First of all, manufacturers. Again, right now it's all about this tablet hype. Everybody needs to have a tablet in their portfolio. And I can understand that, but I can't tell you 
how long this hype will last. Each and every prediction that you can see from analysts that are telling you, I think Nicole and me, we did a video about a couple of months ago where we called out um, a Gartner, a Gartner analyst uh, because of their predictions. They made a prediction on the smartphone market uh, in September last year. And that was before the announcement of uh, the cooperation between Nokia and uh, Windows for Windows Phone 7. And they predicted that in 2014, Symbian will have a market share of 29%. And that was a white paper that you can download on the Gartner website for 10,000 US dollars. And that was their predictions. And guess which people are buying this? These are, um, you know, for example, hedge fund managers. They're transferring billions of dollars based on these predictions. So uh, five months later, even though, if, even though that the whole industry knew already at that time that Symbian is dead, it couldn't get more dead. It was just, I don't know what Nokia wanted to do with it. Everybody knew at that time already that, 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 that RIM is definitely um, getting a little bit of more momentum with the playbook and with the acquisition of QNX, that they're uh, changing their strategy, finally building a phone or a platform where you can experience the internet and not only a messenger. And everybody knew at that time that Windows Phone 7, even though it still seemed to be quite a limited OS, but it was pretty sexy. And a couple of companies were adopting this. So uh, then they came up with the next prediction four months later, saying that uh, Symbion in 2015, <coughs> and remember in September it was 2014, 30% of market share. So just four months later, the next prediction was in 2015, 0.1% of market share. So, and, and they actually don't care, right? It's just happening all the time. And again, they're, they're, they're selling this focus. Making a prediction on a mobile computing market over f longer than, that is longer than, uh, that goes beyond 12 months, just makes no sense at all. It's like, you know, throwing a couple of chicken bones into the air and taking a look at the pattern when they are just uh, hitting the floor and trying to make a prediction. Right? It's just, it just makes no sense at all. And, and everybody who is doing this, and I don't care how big this market researcher group is, is just coming up with complete bogus. And when you look at their numbers, they're even telling you by the thousand units how many, how many devices are getting sold. So everything is changing so quickly and so radically in these days. And that's why I can't tell you how successful tablets will be. Tablets will be successful. Everybody is buying now a tablet. We are getting this first generation of tablet. And it's not cannibalizing, it's not cannibalizing notebook sales, even though that some companies are going to tell you this. It's not cannibalizing netbook sales. This is the first generation of tablets. We don't know if uh, customers or consumers are going to buy a second generation or a third generation. It's a completely new market. Maybe they're just you know, ditching one generation of a notebook for a tablet, and then they're going to buy the, uh, a notebook again. Even this post-PC error talking is something that I'm just not getting. Uh, we still need to do some work somehow. And I'm not sure if someone is here who wrote like a 10 sentence email on a tablet, on a virtual keyboard. Good luck with that. I tried it and it's horrible. It's just not working. I need a physical keyboard. There, there's a reason why we're using a technology or an input system that is 100 years old, which is kind of lame though, I know. But still, virtual keyboards are just not there. So for manufacturers, it's just very important to see what's happening with this tablet market. And what I've been showing you at the very beginning was my very, one of my very first slides, that way more tablets are getting built this year, uh, or this year and they can sell. You know, this already tells you that they weren't really listening to this. And of course, it's very important for developers. For developers, the mobile computing market is just so exciting in these days. There's never been an ecosystem for a developer like this. It is so easy for just one person to come up with a cool idea, sitting in a Starbucks for two and a half weeks, coming up with 400 kilobytes of code, getting it on an, on an Apple, Apple App Store or on an Android marketplace, and 
with having the opportunity of being a millionaire in two weeks. And it's happening, actually. It's, it's happening pretty much each and every day right, with a 99 cent app. So for developers, I think it's just a fantastic time. And they have so many opportunities. And that's why I'm always a little bit puzzled and bothered every time, for example, I'm talking, I'm talking to Android developers. And you might be familiar with it because it's also every, in the news all the time saying that the Android um, market is so fragmented or segmented and we don't know uh, how we can develop for each and every operating system of Android. I mean, there, there are four different chipsets on the market right now. They have three different <coughs> GPUs and three different screen resolutions. And they're whining about this. They should, they should meet an x86 developer that needs to get around, like, I don't know, with 50 million different combinations of hardware. So I think they got a little bit lazy. But anyways, it's still a good time for them. Um, let's come up with some predictions for 2012. Android is becoming the most popular tablet OS. That's going to happen already by the end of this year. And in 2012, they will take over the world of, of tablets, pretty much. Even though that we also have, you know, we have HP with their touchpad, with their web OS, which looks fantastic, but no one is going to buy it. Well, some people are going to buy it. And you should never underestimate HP, which has one of the biggest distribution channels, strongest distribution channels in the world for, for computer hardware. Um, but they just have no chance against this Android momentum. Um, the Apple iPad market share will go down to 20%. That's pretty much a fact. Apple is used to this. That's what happened with them, with computers, with phones. The only market where they, they could, uh, could gain like 70 or 80% of market share with MP3 players. But that's a market that is also dead in the next two years. And um, super phones will heavily cannibalize tablets. That's going to happen. Because people will decide, should I, how about getting a four to five inch device that is very mobile, and that sports the same hardware as a tablet. And you can do all things that you could do with a tablet with a super phone. So I definitely see uh, a huge cannibalization over here. And uh, yeah, and finally, you heard it here first, so you can definitely quote me on this. Um, this is, this is going to happen. I can't give you any numbers. I think that's absolutely bogus, giving you decent numbers about uh, how many million units are getting, getting sold in the market. But you can definitely be sure that uh, when we might gonna meet again by the end of 2012, and we're gonna have a, a chat about the tablet or super phone market, these are pretty much um, the predictions that uh, finally came true. So yeah, and that's about it. That, that wasn't three and a half hours. That was like 35 minutes, wasn't it? Thank you. Oh, by the way, I'm also uh, running a little website, uh, networknews.com and networknews.de. And uh, if you want to listen to more geeky mobile talks and chats, you should head over to meetmobility.com. That's a bi-weekly podcast um, that we're having with uh, a former from a product manager and designer from Nokia and another mobile computing blogger from England. Well, thank you. That's about it.